David Davis, you've had your concerns about the direction of Brexit policy for some time. Why decide to resign now? Well, because the new policy that we are going to propose to the, uh, the European Union, the new negotiating position, involves two things which I think are not, not in the national interest, or at least they're not going to deliver what people think of as, uh, as a proper Brexit. Number one is the issue of using a common rule book. That means a common legal rule book, the statute book. Uh, we'll be having identical laws to the European Union set by then, uh, and although Parliament will nominally have the right to change them, in practice if they do, they suddenly uh, put a problem on the friction, frictionless border, so-called, because you have inspections, but even more seriously, they might actually trigger the fallback option uh, in Northern Ireland, and so no British Parliament will actually do that voluntarily, so that's problem number one. Problem number two is the issue of the customs arrangement, the new future customs arrangement. It uh, actually involves collecting taxes effectively for the European Union. Now we know what they like about this because they're already taking us to court uh, over the, over the uh, tariffs being uh, paid on uh, the Chinese textiles, an organization called OLAF enforces it, and they will, they, will, they will almost certainly insist on that for this new arrangement. So the European Court will have a say over our borders. So those two things seem to me fundamental issues. Um, now, you, know, you could argue that if you want a very, very soft Brexit, you should maybe want to be willing to give that. I don't want to do that. I don't think that's, that's a step too far for me. And the final issue is the negotiating strategy, that if we make yet another, volunteer yet another offer, that the union on past practice is quite like to sit back and say, well, that's very interesting. What else have you got? You know, and, and so, so those three things were, they're quite big and, uh, and f bigger than the other arguments. The arguments in the past have been within a, within a sort of acceptable range, but this one I think is one too far. Some have said that what you're doing here is putting the national interest ahead of the Tory party's interest. Is that how you see it? Well, I don't think of it in those terms, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue the case that the national, I'm, I'm worrying about the national interest. Frankly, the arguments about the Tory party, party's interest, you know, six of one half dozen the other. I mean, so far the place hasn't blown up, you know. Um, uh, I, I argue against the people who want to put letters in and all that sort of thing. I think that's nonsense. So you, so you would want the I'm Prime Minister to stay? Yes. I'm a supporter of the Prime Minister. I think she's a good Prime Minister. I just don't agree with her on this fundamental policy, which unfortunately is central to my, to my old brief. It would have been me that had to carry it out, me that had to present it to Parliament, me that had to make it work in the European Union. And frankly, if I don't believe in it, I'm not the best person to do it. And just to sum up, I suppose, what your principal position is here, I know, because we've spoken about it, you had a pretty clear view what you think the British people voted for yes. when they voted to leave the European Union. And your concern is that what the Prime Minister has put on the table effectively breaches the trust that people placed in her. Well, I, I put it slightly, you're right, but I put it slightly differently. I would say that if you sort of got the set, if you could somehow get a single mind for the 17 and a half million people who voted to leave and said, do you think that's uh, taking back control of laws? Do you think that is uh, doing away with the rule of the European Court of Justice? They'd probably say no to both. And that's, that's my test. Now, it's a sort of, it's a judgmental test. It's the test I'm making. I haven't talked to all 17 and a half million. But that's my view. Now, back on the back benches, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a position you've relished in the past. Yeah. How do you see your life? Well, I've barely had time to think about that, frankly, in the last 24 hours. But uh, I always, I know, I view being a backbench member of Parliament as an incredibly privileged uh, and incredibly powerful role. You know, I've fought campaigns in the past on torture, on civil liberties, on surveillance, on all of those things, uh, and hopefully with a little effect. And there will be other issues in the future which I will be fighting campaigns on. Some of them will be related to Europe. I mean, I, I suspect my, my first speech back in the Commons will probably be on the Customs Union and the Trade Bill next week. So I will be using the information and knowledge I have, uh, hopefully uh, for the advantage of our policy and national interest and our government. And, and, and very finally, um, should your colleagues be surprised that you've resigned, given your contribution to that important historic debate at Chequers on Friday? 
I don't understand the question. Well, what, what I'm saying is, what did you? What I'm really asking is, when you made your contribution to the debate on Friday, were you clear about your reservations? Oh, I was absolutely clear about my reservations. Everybody understood it. Indeed, one or two other members of cabinet um, referred to it and, and took it as a reference point in in their arguments to raise concerns about this policy. I actually started what I said with the words, Prime Minister, as you know, I'm going to be the odd man out in this debate. Uh, and I made it very plain what my concerns were. Uh, and sorry, finally, finally, w would you expect other colleagues to resign? As, would you like them to resign? No, that's not, look, that's not my judgment. My, you know, that's not for me to judge. I wouldn't take any notice of anybody else saying you should resign, Davis, uh, at all. Uh, in fact, I'd probably make, make me go in the other direction. Uh, and I would uh, not extend that discourtesy to anybody else.